think you pastor Jacob Akali Achewa for your warm welcome and elaborate introduction. I now greet all of you in the powerful name of Jesus. I greet all of you in the powerful name of Jesus. Uh, wave back to me if you are happy and you know, shout amen. amen. If you are happy and you know this side, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you are happy and you know this side, shout a big amen. amen. We thank God for the privilege and for the honor to stand before you this week just to share with you from the word of the Lord. No any other agenda. The agenda is one, my Lord or my God and I. I have a friend so loving, so very dear to me. That friend is God. And so we walk together, we walk together, my God and I. When I am weary, is there for me. When I am happy, is there for me. Come rain, come sunshine. My Lord is there for me. And therefore, no any other option but my God and I. We'll be uh, taking the word of God uh, from the book of John. But specifically, we'll be led by the book of John Chapter 14, verse 20. We'll be led by the book of John, chapter 14, verse 20. Once in a while, we'll be drawing insights from other texts of the Bible, but uh, basically uh, looking at what the servant of the Lord is telling us in this book of John. So allow me to go straight away to the word of God. Um, no, but before that, I should say I'm not new to new life. I have been here before many years ago. Uh, it was only one Sabbath. I remember the sermon that I preached here was O Warm Jacob. And uh, we knew that all of us are worms of God. Though we think that we are somebodies, we are nobodies without God. That was then. I came to New Pastor uh, around 2010, 2013, when we were doing our masters together at AUA. And then uh, I also have uh, my father here worshiping with you always, Elder David Nyabuti Singombe. Uh, you just look at my head and you know that indeed we are related. Uh, there is no doubt. And uh, also many friends in the congregation. So I'm not new. I feel at home. And I pray that the Lord will bless us together this week in Jesus' name. So my Lord and I, and this afternoon we begin the topic of our message under this big team, theme is my God and I the foundation of our journey? My God and I the foundation of our journey. We know very well that uh, this world is not our home. We know very well that we are all passing by. We know that one day it shall come to pass that a day is coming when we will be finally at home with our Lord and Savior. Bible says on that day the trumpet shall sound, those who are dead in Christ will rise, and those who will be alive at that moment will be changed in a twinkling of an eye, and together we will meet the Lord in the air, and we will go with him to that land of no goodbye. The land that John saw, where there is no sorrow, there is no pain, there is no tears for the old order of things has passed away. And so today we say that the foundation of this journey is nothing else but the Lord and I. 
And John tries to bring this picture through the text. John chapter 14, verse 20. It says, And at that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. And on that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. The book of John, of course, chapter 14, we know very well, contains the last messages of Jesus to his disciples. He is uh, talking to them at a time that they are about to part ways. They are going separate. Jesus has been with them. Jesus has taught them. And time has come for Jesus to fulfill his mission by going to the cross, going to Calvary, is going to be crucified. And after the crucifixion is going to be buried and uh, is going to come out of the grave. And now as he comes out of the grave, he is not going to be with his disciples again. He is going to be with the Father. And so these are like uh, goodbye words for Jesus to his disciples. And so he is talking to them at a time of uncertainty. At a time of sorrow. Because uh, the disciples were disturbed. We have been with our master. We have been with our God. We have been with our Lord. He has been leading this journey. But now he's talking words of sorrow. He's telling us, let not your hearts be troubled. He's telling them that I am going away. Actually, when you begin the verse from verse 19, you will see exactly the picture. Jesus is talking to them and he's telling them, a little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. And so it is a moment of departure. And Jesus is speaking promises to his disciples. He is giving them courage because he sees discouragement in them. He is giving them hope because he's seeing hopelessness in them. And so Jesus gives them a promise. That even though I am going, I will not leave you as orphans. Somebody else will come and he will be with you just like I have been with you. But again, Jesus gives them the assurance that even after this other person has come and has been with them, he will also come to be with them, not for one day, not for two days, not for a thousand years, but to be with them forever and ever and ever. Say amen. And so, my Lord and I, is a theme <coughs> that... Uh, reminds us, especially when we read uh, chapter 14, verse 20, it reminds us of the relationship that is there between God and Jesus, or let me say God the Father and the Son, and uh, by extension through the Son, the relationship that is there for you and uh, for me in the Lord Jesus Christ. That Christ is assuring the disciples that 
just as he is going to be with the father him and the father they are not going to remain by themselves he will be with them he will walk with them he will journey with them in good times and in bad times he will be with them and so allow me to begin today by saying that my god and i is the foundation of our journey with Christ and I'm going to elaborate in a few minutes time I want us to understand this week that when we are talking about my God and I it is not just a phrase for the week of prayer it is not just a, a nice phrase to color our end of year week of prayer I want us to understand that my God and I is a reflection of the deep and personal relations relationship with me and my Lord deep and personal relationship between me and my Father in heaven and this deep foundational relationship or rather relationship is the foundation of our journey to heaven the moment we fail to have a relationship with god then our journey to heaven is founded on a shady ground then our foundation of our journey to heaven is not solid my god and i is here to remind us that for us to be sure that we are going to meet our savior one day we must be anchored in him we must have a grip in him he must be in us and us in him my god and i the foundation of our journey which journey our spiritual journey why do you say so pastor i want to suggest four points why i say it is the foundation of our spiritual journey our relationship with god is what establishes that Christ is in us and we are in him and so we are one and when we are one with Christ what does it mean it means we have an identity when Christ is in me and I am in him we are walking together my lord and I that one defines my identity it tells who i am it tells that i belong to god and god belongs to me and when i belong to god and he belongs to me so who am i i am a son i am a daughter of god so my god and i establishes our identity that when christ is in the father and Christ is in us and we are in Christ it means that we are different from the world we belong to Christ and if we belong to Christ who are we we are sons and daughters of the kingdom of God that is reason number 1 why i say it is the foundation of my spiritual journey Number 2 my god and i anchors us in his unconditional love god is love that is the best definition we can give god god is love and god because he is love those who are in him and he is in them those who sing my lord and i must portray that character of god which is love and so my god and i 
anchors us in God's unconditional love. And this unconditional love of God is what sustains us. The Akali sisters sang about the grace of God. It is not about what I am. It is not about what I'm doing. It is not about my education. It is not about my position. I am what I am today because of the grace of God. And so because God is love, he has given us his unmerited favor that while we were yet sinners, he loved us and he offered the best for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have life and life eternal for this matter. So it's the foundation of our spiritual journey. When we have Christ in us, we have laid a sure foundation. We love one another. We pray for one another. We visit one another in times of problems. This is the foundation, the love of God. Yes, I say my God and I is not just a phrase, but it reflects that is there between us and our God. And why do I say so? My God and I empowers us with his presence. This relationship of being in Christ and Christ in us or being in God and God in us is the only source of power in times of trouble. It gives us the energy to navigate the challenges of this world. Nothing gives satisfaction to someone who is going through challenges, who has been left by the relatives, who has been left by the friends, who has been neglected even by the church. Nothing gives them comfort than understanding that there is one friend who will never ever forsake me. His name is Jesus and he's walking with me through this journey. My God and I is the power that ensures us of his presence. And therefore, it does not matter what I'm going through. It does not matter for how long I've been there. It does not matter how much sleepless nights it has cost me. It does not matter what my friends are saying about it. As long as Jesus is with me, I may suffer for a while. The devil will seem to have won the battle, but the final battle must be won with my, by my Jesus. And so it is the foundation. When we know that we have Christ, we are empowered. We are never shaken in our spiritual journey. We know that even though it is not well now, it is going to be well in the future. For because he lives, I confess tomorrow, because he lives, all fears are gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth living just because he lives. But remember, he's not living in a vacuum. He's living in me. And so, my God and I. My God and I is not just a statement or a phrase but the sure foundation <coughs> of our relationship with God why because the fourth point it gives us purpose and hope for today and eternity this is what gives us purpose this is what uh, tells us why we should live this is what gives us the reason that we should live the reason that Paul today says that for me to live is what? Is Christ. But to die is gain. What is life without Jesus? 
what shall it benefit a man to get everything in this world and then at the end lose his soul my god and i is what gives us the purpose of living that when we know christ is in us we are not shaken by the things of this world we are not shaken by our challenges because we know there is hope for today and there is eternity to fight for my heart can sing when i pause to remember that a heartache here is what the things of one of what of this earth will dim and lose their what their value especially when i remember their what they are just for a while that message can only have meaning in your life that message can only have meaning in my life if christ is in me and i am in him and therefore my god and i that is why it is a foundation of our life so when we look at our text john chapter 14 verse 20 at that day which day is jesus talking about jesus is talking about the day that he will have left and the comforter will have come that is the holy spirit <clears throat> but wait a minute what is the key thought in our text the key thought in 14 verse 20 is this that our journey with god is deeply personal look at the relationship that jesus is bringing the relationship between the father and the son very personal very protected very critical it's not a relationship that you can joke around with that is the point here jesus relating to how he is so close to the father that looking at him and looking at the father there is no difference they are so intertwined they are so much together that you cannot realize it is so personal it is so intimate the my god and i relationship ensures that we are never alone because our god pastor is a personal god He deals with me as jambane arap mugusu. He deals with you at your personal level. He comes at your personal level. He finds you at your personal level. He carries you from your personal level. He's a personal God. And so because he's personal, he lives in me and I live in him. There is no time that I am alone. He is with me and I am with him and so my God and I. Yes, Jesus is telling his disciples that although you will not see me again, you will never be alone. In your joys you will never be alone in your sorrows you will never be alone in your tears you will never be alone no time you will be alone because just as i am in the father and i am in you and if you are in me no time that you will be alone we will always walk together my lord and i Jesus is reminding them that your life will never be purposeless. Jesus is reminding them and uh, I will always uh, walk with you step by step in everything you do because we have a relationship. 
you are my son you are my daughter i will journey with you friends the relationship between god and us is not a distant or theoretical relationship when I talk about distance relationship, you understand. That is not the kind of relationship that God is talking about. When Jesus says, I in the Father, and I in you, and you in me, it is not uh, distant. He is there, Emmanuel, God with us. He is with us. It is not a distance or distant relationship. It is not theoretical. This is not theory. It is deeply or a deep personal and transformative relationship. Something is introduced here, transformative. We know what it means to transform. To transform simply means causing a change in someone or something. So we are saying there is no way we can claim that it is my God and I or he is in me and I am in him and we remain the same. We must change. Nobody meets Jesus and remains the same. When the demon-possessed people met with Jesus, the demons were casted away. When the sick met Jesus, they were healed. When sinners met Jesus, they were transformed. And so there is no way we can call our souls Seventh-day Adventists, members of the remnant church, yet we are the same. When pastor invited me to Nairobi Central, when he was the pastor there, thank you for calling me from uh, Keshagi. I come and uh, shower with warm water here, Kidogo, Donarudi Uko Bush. I preached a sermon there, solve our problems, but save our pigs. You know, most of us are uh, like uh, the people in uh, called, where? Where was this? Gatherings. Jesus comes into Gedren and uh, there is this demon possessed guy and Jesus heals this guy and Jesus uh, allows the pigs to, uh, sorry the demons to run into their pigs and the pigs uh, get into the lake and they are destroyed and these people immediately begin to count the loss I usually use an illustration. Maybe they were that small size that each pig was costing a thousand shillings or so. And they do 1,000 times uh, 2,000 and see 2 million is lost here. Just by this man being in our territory, maybe for 40 minutes. No, they say, thank you Jesus for healing this man. But kanyaga kubwa kubwa teke teke kama garindogo potea. They chased him. That means they only wanted Jesus as long as their comfort zone was not interfered with. And that could be the kind of Christianity that we live today. It is my Lord and I, as long as Jesus, you don't touch my comfort zone. And that is why the church of God is full of abagere, nabagusi, nabagikoyo, because they are no Christians. We still hold to our tribal lines. And uh, we face it, Pastor, during elections. Last year it was Aluyo. This time it must be ours. It's because we are not yet converted. He is in us, but the relationship is not transformative. So we say, this relationship, when Jesus is in us and we are in him, he must transform us, he must uh, make us, he must change us into the kind of beings that he wants us to be. 
And therefore, when we say, my God and I, it means we have accepted the Lordship of Jesus and we have allowed Jesus to lead. We have allowed Jesus to solve our problems and destroy our pigs. The pigs of tribalism. The pigs of immorality. The pigs of gossip. There are so many pigs that Jesus has to destroy. The moment we accept his leadership. So we say, this relationship is so personal that it should make a personal difference. It is not about my wife and children. It is about me. It is not about my elders and the church leaders. It is about me. It is not about my pastor. It is about me. For it is my God and I. So this relationship must transform us. But what I like most about this, my God and I, it simply means a daily walk of love with God. A daily walk of trust with my Savior. And a daily walk of life with the purpose. You have direction because Jesus is leading and you are following. So Jesus tells them, at that day, <coughs> you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, <coughs> Sorry, and I am with you. Allow me to go back to verse 16 and 17. How does Jesus now promise to be with his disciples after he has been taken away. This is how he promises to be with them. And this is how he promises them that they will never be alone. Chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. You see, Jesus is telling them, this my God and I is not for everybody. It's only for those who have a relationship with me. And that is why I say, this is the foundation of our spiritual journey. Because when we have a relationship with God, we can find the Holy Spirit. We can have the Holy Spirit in us. Because we know God and therefore we know his spirit, we know his voice, we know his ways. And we can respond accordingly as his children. And so Jesus promises to be with us through the spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, God is not away from us. He is with us and what is he doing with us? When I say my Jesus and I, so what? What are we doing with my God and I? The Spirit is with us doing what? Number one, guiding and strengthening us in our spiritual journey. The Spirit is with us doing what? Number two, comforting us in our trials. That even when it is hot in the furnace, Christ has assured that he is with us through the Spirit. The Spirit will be given to us for what purpose? To empower us to fulfill God's mission. When we are filled with the Spirit, mission is not a big deal. It will be the order of the day. 
it will be our priority because he is in us and we are in him. Jesus says, the spirit will dwell with you. Doing what? Keeping your relationship with God alive and dynamic. It is the spirit of God that will keep our relationship alive and dynamic. Our relationship with God. The Spirit of God will dwell in us. God will dwell in us in the form of the Spirit. Doing what? Reminding us of God's promises. Hence, making the journey possible and joyful. Regardless of the challenges. My God and I is a relationship with God. Friends, just as a friend walks beside you in life. But I want to say more than, not just. I want to erase the just and say more than, more than. A friend walks beside you in life. God, through the Holy Spirit, walks with you every step of your life all the way my savior leads me what have I to ask God has promised friends that he is with us are you weary are you troubled are you living in fear of certain things has your life been threatened by the things of this world i want to assure you that there is one who is powerful who is not even threatened by death because he tested death and he conquered it his name is jesus i suggest you to use him today i suggest to you this jesus today he has promised to be with you you are not alone you are not alone you are not alone. Has death robbed you, your loved one? You are not alone. Are you going through some economic challenges? You are not alone. Is it social matters? You are not alone. Is it health issues? You are not alone. Any physical issues? You are not alone. More than a friend walks with you in life, God through the Holy Spirit will walk with you. Sometimes he may not choose to take you from the problem, but he will come and be with you there. Just like the case of the Hebrew men in the burning fiery furnace, he chose that you are not coming out of there, but I'm coming to be with you there. And what I like about God, even though he will not let me out of that place, finally he will vindicate me. Let us just be patient with our God. More than a friend walks beside you in life. Oh, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. Let me put it here. Sorry for that. God will walk with you in life. And so our theme song our theme song 5 456 I have a friend so precious so very dear to me he loves me with such a tender love he loves me so faithfully I like this even when I am faithless he remains faithful I could not live apart from him. For sure, what is life without him? I love to feel him nigh. And so we dwell together, my Lord and I. Sometimes, yes, sometimes, because we are still in the sinful world. I am faint and I'm weary. He knows that I am weak. And as he bids me lean on him, his help, I glad, glad, gladly seek. 
He leads me in the paths of light beneath the sunny sky and so we walk together my Lord and I. I like what the third stanza says. I, I, I tell him all my sorrows. I tell him all that uh, pleases me. He is not like these worldly friends who judge me when I tell them about my challenges. He doesn't judge me. I am free with him. I tell him my joys. I tell him my pleasures. What pleases me. I tell him what annoys me. He tells me what I ought to do. That is why I am not afraid. Because we are walking together. My God and I. So we talk together. He knows. That I am longing some weary soul to win. I said it is a transformative relationship. And it, it pushes us to do his will. One of which is to enhance the mission. And so he knows that I am longing some weary soul to win. And so he bids me go and speak. The loving word for him. He bids me tell his wondrous love. I cannot keep quiet. For what the Lord has done to me. I cannot tell it all. At this point I cannot help. Choristers just come. Just come forward. I need not to continue with this sermon. I must cut it short here now. And so he bids me go and speak. The loving word for him. He bids me tell his wondrous love and why he came to die. And so we walk together, my Lord and I. Before I make the last statement and pray and finish this sermon, I invite all of us to stand as we sing this song slowly and internalizing the meaning. The meaning of this song is that I have a relationship. Not just a relationship, but a personal relationship with my God. He dwells in me and me in him. And so, my God and I, God have a friend so precious, so very dear to me, 456. Let's make it slow. I have a friend so precious, so very dear to me. Such tender love, he loved so faithfully. I could not live apart from him. I love to feel him nigh, and so we dwell together, my Lord and I. So I tell him all that pleases me. I 
tell him what I know. He tells me what I ought to do. He tells me how to try. And so we talk. begin this week of prayer, I want to pray that uh, this week of prayer will help us to deepen our experience of my God and I. And the only way to deepen this experience is to allow ourselves to walk with God daily through prayers, through scriptures and total surrender to him. This is a week of prayer, and I want to believe that uh, my God and I will be a special prayer for all of us. For my God and I means having a deeper and personal relationship with God. My God and I means trusting in God, even when the situation is bad. I want to pray that through this week, God will give us that stamina. God will give us that faith to depend on him even when we think that it is beyond us. Let us embrace his presence as the solid foundation of our life. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. Dear loving Father in heaven, we thank you for the experience of my God and I. We thank you for the wisdom that you gave this church new life. To remember to have this revival week where we are reminded of our relationship with you. And God, I'm praying that it will not just be another week of prayer, but it will be the week of prayer where your children will make a decision and many will begin a serious walk with you because we have discovered that my God and I is not just a statement. It is a deep relationship with you. Help us, God, to enhance this through prayer, through Bible study, and many other ways as long as we remain in you and you remain in us. May your will be done in our lives now and forever, we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.